Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 15th Yi tutorial. Wow, we are flying through these. Um, one thing I've noticed is these tutorials are actually becoming almost as popular as my cute ones, so there must be a big group of you guys out there wanting to learn Yi. So, one thing you should know is my website, voidrums.com. I will try to put these tutorials and the source code out there. Um, for this, because we've been flying through them so fast, it's going to be difficult for me to get the code out there each time. Um, you should note that Void Realms, if you go out to Facebook and you type in Void Realms, there's an actual group out there. It's a public group, anybody's welcome to join, and it's just a bunch of us to talk about programming. Alright, so, today we're going to be talking about model validation. So, if you've been following along, we've been kind of talking about how to load stuff, how to save stuff, do really cool stuff. Well, what happens when you go to save and it isn't exactly what you wanted it to be. Well, that's called model validation. And we're going to do a simple example of that. So we're going to crack open our database. We're going to go to alter table. And we're just going to say that uh, first name, last name cannot be null. So we have changed the underlying database. The next step is we need to change the model. And there's an easy way and a hard way of doing this, and I'm all about easy, as I'm sure you are too. The hard way is you actually crack open the model class and you start typing. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the easy way. So let's just go back here, load up GI, maybe if I remember the password. There we go. Go to model generator. And we're going to overwrite the teacher's class because that's what we just generated. Notice how it says diff. So we can actually click on diff and see the differences. And that right here is what I wanted to bring to your attention. First name and last name are now required, meaning that's the ye version of not null, meaning that field is required. If you try to save that record, it will fail if you leave it blank. And we're going to demonstrate that in this tutorial. So just go ahead and overwrite. Once your code's successfully been generated, you can just go back to the index here. All right, now let's comment that out. And we're going to do a little bit of finagling here with our stuff. There we go. Let's go back to teachers. We're going to use the built in method first. Notice how there's suddenly ah, a login prompt. That's what there is. I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> Anyways, notice how there's suddenly red star next to each one. That means it's required. Whereas if we go to students, which has pretty much the same structure, there's no red star. It says fields with a red star are required. So we can just actually create a blank student if we want to. See? Boom. Well, we don't want that, so let's actually it. Now if we try to do that with teachers and we go create, that's validation in action right there. It says please fix the following input errors. First name cannot be blank. Last name cannot be blank because those are required. Now this is Ajax based so if we do that and we go here you'll see it in action. Now let's actually I should say if we go here and then here eh, Ajax didn't trigger. My bad. But, um, we can find the code to put the Ajax in there in another tutorial, but I wanted to really demonstrate validation. So if you try to make something, that's what happens. So let's examine the parts of this in Teachers Create. Let's go to Teachers Controller. Here's Create. You can see how what we're doing here is we're creating a new teacher record. And then ignore this part because what we're saying is if the post back is already set, meaning we're saving the information. So all we're really worried about at this point is we're rendering the model. Well, it's a blank model, so there's nothing there. That leads us to this point. You type something in, you hit save, or create this point, and then this happens. So what's really going on is right here, we're saying if is set, blah, blah, blah model attributes we're loading it from the post if model save notice how if model save 
there's no if model not saved and we're going to explore why let's go to create and you see how we're rendering a partial this is one of those gotchas in ye where you may be looking for the code and you find it's actually somewhere else and the reason why it's in this underscore form is because it's used in several spots it's used in the create and update see underscore form this is called code reuse all right so here is our you guessed it our form and well actually let's just enable Ajax and see if that does it I'm not quite sure if it will do it or not but let's try this just an experiment bear me a quick tangent here no nope, doesn't enable Ajax on the form and I think that's part of because the render partial but we'll just change this to false so I will do the Ajax in a different tutorial all right, back to what we were doing. Sorry, I'm scatterbrained. Right here, this echo form summary, that is the actual error message that you're seeing. That's the big red box right here. That's the error summary. And then each one of these has an error field. It's a hidden field until, of course, there's an error message and that's this last name cannot be blank it gets the name from the display property so we can actually go into the model here and you can say surname I just kinda wanted to demonstrate this real quick notice how it's surname instead of last name let's actually get rid of that and you can see how it says surname again so that is the interaction with validation. You can see how the labels can come into play there. So sometimes the database administrator will call it, you know, my first name, and you want to just call it first name. So you would override that in the model. Now you should be aware that every time you generate that model, you're going to have to go back into the attribute labels. Now you can actually pull that out of the description in GUI. So that's automatic validation right there. And let's go here. Do, 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 do. Where am I? There I am. Derp. It's been one of those mornings, ironically. I don't know what the deal is, but close the model, close that. Now let's go back to our test here. And we're just going to say, we'll grab this example here. Now, if we run this code example, what do you think is going to happen? This is in our, our test action, by the way. We're making a new teachers. We're setting the first name. We are not setting the last name. And then we're calling save. So let's give this a unique name like um, validate. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so we're going to actually go here and we're going to test. And voila didn't print anything we're gonna actually make it print here this is one of those little gotchas in ye and I kinda wanted to go out of my way to explain this because it was one of my first stumbling blocks you can see how we've got any record and it's you know it's a C active record it knows it's a database record so we're going to actually look at the database now close that and well where is it there's no validate we should have a number 12 with validate well what happened you guessed it of course we didn't validate it so the saves actually returning false here so what we can do is say if not save echo did not save this is just kind of a down and dirty kind of troubleshooting here so if the model does not save it did not save and then we're gonna just refresh this you see up here in the corner did not save so how do we get around that 
I mean, we can tell that it didn't save, but we need to validate the model. So we're going to actually say, if not, or actually, if model validate, then model save and then you can programmatically say okay didn't save something that's going on here essentially does the same thing right notice how we can get an array of errors out of this so let's actually do that so we'll say for each Mm -hmm. model errors as error echo and we're just going to echo this out here going to make a big old mess followed by did not save whoopsie Array conversion string. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> derp. Had one of those moments. Sorry. I just ate Arby's, and I don't know what it is about Arby's. I love Arby's, but whenever I eat it, I'm like brain dead for like an hour. Here we go. So you can see through Veridump that we have an array with one item, and there's our 25 link string that says last name cannot be blank. So you can actually go in here and get the, you know, do a for each or get the count and actually pull out the actual error message here. Um, so that's how you'd programmatically deal with that. That in a nutshell is how to do validation. Um, seems pretty simple, but I guarantee you as you're working with E, you will run into that problem multiple times, which is why I really wanted to cover it because it was a huge stumbling block for me when I first started with E. I would go through and I'd, you know, hit save and nothing would happen. And I'm like, what the heck? Where's my information? And then I had to figure out it wasn't validating. And then, you know, when you get into like database transactions, validation is huge. Um, simply because you want to validate it every turn that, hey, it's working. And if not, you want to figure out where it's not working. So that's all for this tutorial. Um, hope you found this educational and entertaining. Uh, shameless plug advertisement here. Be sure to visit my website, www.voidrealms.com. Also, go out to Facebook and join the Void Realms group where there's just a bunch of us hanging out talking about programming.